Okay, everybody. Hey, this is Krista and Bree from Mako. Hi. We're happy to see you. We are broadcasting from miles away. Broadcasting, that's an old word. Um, <laughs> we're streaming from miles apart, which is really cool. So um, our original project for Ceramic Jam was actually a painting project that required a product that you may not have in your studio. So we wanted to switch it up a little bit and do something Can different. Can I interrupt you really quick? Can yes. we tell the panelists about the um, making sure the messages are right before we get going? Oh, yes, yes, let's um, remind that everybody was here. Everyone's here now. Okay, so when you go to the chatter part, if you want to ask a question or say something, like DJ, he says, hey, Brie and CT, hey, um, make sure that you have it clicked where it says to click all panelists and attendees, because right now it's set default for all panelists, and that way, not everybody can see your questions. So we want everybody to be able to see what's going on. So when we start responding to things, you'll know what we're talking about. Okay. Thanks, Krista. Um, you're welcome. Thank you for the reminder. So we decided to go with something that you can use right now. Um, a lot of people have been doing, of course, take and make things and pottery to go kits, whatever you want to call them, but the things that you can do right now to help your business continue to go um, during this crazy time. So these are some techniques and projects that are very simple. Um, that you can access through the Mako website. And in this presentation, we will have the links to those projects you can get to. I talked to my hand with my hands, so you'll see those a lot. Okay. Um, there we go. So we are talking about everything but a brush. So these techniques and projects that you can use right now, they allow your customers to use household items or miscellaneous things that they may have around the house. Um, and this is a way to provide projects that don't require brushes. So that adds a little, a little bit more simplicity to your planning with your projects. Some of the everyday items that you're going to see in the projects we're sharing are dish soap, plastic forks, cardboard tubes, lace and string, and sponges. And there's other things that we'll talk about later. The projects we're featuring use these tools, but then we'll have some other ideas for you in a bit. Ooh, bubbling. That's me. We, That's you, Miss Catherine. We just went <laughs> over this this morning, so give us just a little bit. <laughs> so everyone knows how to do bubbling. It's a simple, easy technique. Uh, but more importantly, your customers already have the bubbles at home. So all you really need to give them is the ratio of how to make the bubbles and then uh, the glaze to be able to do it with. And so they can do a lot of the same techniques that you teach them in the store. You can just do it at home. Um, so there's a couple of different ideas. Uh, one, or one is the bubbly unicorn plaque and underneath there you can click on that link and it will send you to our instructions step-by-step step so that you know how to do that one. Um, along with the other two, click the link, you're able to go. But more importantly, um, you guys can do a very similar thing to what we're doing right now is if you happen to um, do a bubbling technique, you could do a quick video, you could do a go live video uh, for your customers so they could go back to that particular technique that's maybe a little bit more complicated, you could do it oh, later. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Started to die. Wait, don't uh, pay no attention to that. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and so have, having uh, uh, content to be able to create videos um, that will also help your customers be able to do those techniques, but then also um, are easy to do for you to create content, basically. So Krista, I think we're ready for the next slide. Now that you guys have next. seen what they all are. Even though we've already given a yeah. teaser, it's just a little teaser. So painting with a fork, this is something that we did at the holiday camp last year at Mako, but it was such a simple and fun technique. Just a plastic fork, if you didn't have a plastic fork, somebody could even use a real one. And we did Christmas designs here because we had these readily available, but you know, it's not a bad time to start thinking about Christmas. People have time on their hands right now and they could do some projects, but other ways you could use a fork is doing like grass, it could be a great springtime thing. You can do a basket weave look even kind of some fun designs on the border. Um, Bree said she saw once that somebody had done, kind of did the border with uh, the rim of a plate, like a rim dinner plate mm -hmm. with a fork, and then went back the other direction and made it into some basket weave. You could do some little stripes on the rim. You can just do a lot of experimenting with it and have fun. So we thought these were some simple and fun projects you could use. You could also do plaid if you went like, Ooh. and then like forks this way. 
really good idea. And we added bam bamboo skewer on here um, as one of the tools that you would use is because if you want to add up, say you get a little too much color in there, they could scrape some color out of there and add some more definition like you see in the wreath plate. Bamboo skewer, but also like toothpick, uh, you know, all of those things. You could even use like a metal kebab stick if that's what they had at home. True. You know, anything that would work. Exactly. Good call. Okay, so cardboard tube, aka toilet paper rolls, because we all know everyone has all of the toilet paper. <laughs> so they've got the rolls. And if not, they're soon going to have the rolls. Um, and so this is a great way to be able to use uh, the cardboard tube technique, um, which is basically just taking that cardboard tube, cutting it up um, so that it could be a flower, you could make it into a spider, butterfly, cut them super thin. You can cut them really chunky um, and then you use them basically like a stamp. Uh, so it makes it really easy to use, but more importantly, it's something that they have at home. Again, this is another technique that you could do a go live on, get content for your um, pages and also um, have that then as a, a, as a tool for your customers to use as a resource later on. Exactly. So again, all of those are links. And if you have not done this before, it's really cool when you cut it, you can actually use it like the little spider one that we have on here. We just left the, the tube round, but when you first start using that tube, when you first dip it into the paint, um, you wanna treat it kind of like a stamp. You wanna, don't wanna get it really globby or you'll get not even pretty designs. But I would suggest trying it on like a paper towel or something first, just because the softer that cardboard gets, the better the stamp does. Do we give that as a tip. Like and then you can also make it to different shapes. You could do the butterfly plate here like we have, we've kind of scrunched it up a little bit so you can shape your tube to do different things or even cut it to do different things. So Wait, um, Jason has a question. I oh, missed sorry. where to find the slides. Is there a link? Uh, so it's just the slides that are on the screen right now, but we'll, we'll put the whole PowerPoint up online later so you'll have access to all those links. Exactly. BI is taking care of all that good stuff for us. Um, so this is using lace and string. Um, you have been to probably classes that we've taught before where we've used everything from cheesecloth, um, hamper netting, lace, doilies, anything that has kind of an opening that you can place onto your a, a piece of pottery. So you'd have a background color and then put a little bit of netting or something on top, put another color on top of that, and then you pull it off. So these will have the instructions on here in these links. But another thing you can do is like the one called spiral linen. We used jute, which is kind of like twine. People might have twine around the house, string, yarn, anything like that. The cool thing about those types of materials is that they have that kind of fuzziness to them. So they are not just perfect string, little stringy lines. They give you some texture, which is kind of cool. So Design Aligner is one of those products that you guys know that come in kind of uh, an individualized, it's, I think it's 1.2 ounces um, and is incredibly reasonably priced. So instead of sending home brushes, you could also have the option of just sending them home with Designer Liner, um, you know, and who doesn't like to zen out and do a bunch of super fine details. I think it's even called like zen doodling or something. Well, it used to be called. Um, but that's a, a nice, easy way for people to just kind of hang out, draw, uh, do a, a whole a whole lot of fun textures. You could do pointillism, like a whole bunch of dots, um, but they don't need a ton of different colors because you can send them home with just black and uh, and a couple of other highlight colors in stroke and coat, and uh, you know, and they're good to go. So uh, each of these are kind of three different styles of using designer liner, um, kind of filling it in on the on the doodle vase. Um, those black sections are filled in with designer liner. The modern accents uh, in the center, that's more filling in large spaces with a uh, stroking coat color. And um, the last one um, is more about uh, super fine detail. But lots of different ways. Designer liner, you guys know, you can also water it down, make it super easy. They can even just use finger painting um, to get some of those um, lines to kind of soften up a little bit. So there's lots of possibilities in the designer liner land. And these are a little bit more, you know, some can be more detailed, like the, the doodle vase obviously is much more detailed, but there are a lot of customers that you have that are really talented and want to spend the time to do this. And One thing I've seen a lot of is people doing kits for kids, 
but I think we want to make sure that we're doing kits for adults too, because they're, they can paint right along with them. And that's another way to expand your market. So make sure if you're not already, maybe you already are. Um, but I feel like several studios I've seen have just done kid kits. Make sure you do stuff for adults because that'll keep them busy too and make some more money for you. Great idea, Krista. Thank you. Um, sponging, that's like the classic thing when I first opened my studio 20 plus years ago, you know, the sponging is all that you would do. But you know, there, it's a great technique to do. You can do it in part some areas and do it very light, like you see on the foundation sponge project. And then also on the other pieces where we have it kind of all mixed and modeled. We used it with foundations, which is certainly our 06 firing, and then stoneware. I mean, a lot of times with stoneware, you don't think about doing those basic techniques that you would use in earthenware but it's a great way to mix those colors up and make it a little different. And most everybody has a sponge in their house that they can use. It doesn't have to be the sea sponge. Yep, exactly. You can use a regular house sponge. You could also use the, um, like a scrub brush as, Ooh, yeah. uh, as a fun texture. You can also use just like a dish cloth. As long as you're not overly soaking the cloth, if you just get it, um, get a little bit of glaze on there, tap it off to the side. You can also get some of the sponging look just with like a, a dishcloth or something, anything that has those fibers that are going to give you not a complete look. And again, that's all stuff that all content, you could do uh, one technique every day as a Facebook live just to show your customers, even if they don't have their to-go products yet, it might be the thing that makes them want to get a to-go product project so that they can do this technique or any technique exactly. that you're Exactly, and you're staying in front of them too, for sure. Courtney um, Joyner, I don't know if you guys all saw her um, virtual class on Friday, it was great. I mean, she's so brilliant. She had such practical tips for you for what to do with your kits and how to run things and how she's doing things. So if you didn't get to check that out yet, please do BI, if they haven't already posted it, they will. Um, I think it was actually an email they just sent out earlier today, I can't remember. Um, but anyway, that is staying in front of your customer is key to, so they'll remember you. And we thought these were kind of fun, you know, just simple things you can do, a toothbrush for splattering. And, you know, these, these techniques that we're telling you are things that you already know. But when times get busy and crazy, we tend to forget the simple things, going back to basics. So splatter painting is so fun. Anybody can do it. People could do a handprint on top of it. They could do hand lettering on top of it. Um, they could, you know, stencil something on top of it. And then this rainbow striped bowl is all done with tape. Um, so you can get different sizes of tape. I know BI has a lot of different options for you that they can use. And then just doing a simple rainbow on there. Um, so any simple technique that you've done in the past, now's the time to bring it out and try to think about how you can transfer that into something your customers can do easily at home. So more ideas um, that we can use. Uh, we just basically did a brainstorming session of figuring out all of the different things that you can use. Uh, Amy just put in a, a plastic grocery bag um, would be a great idea. And there, here are a whole bunch more. So um, if anyone has ever done a shoe print project where you basically have clay and squish uh, your, you basically step on the clay to make like a pendant or something like that. And you get the texture of your shoe on the bottom um, with the clay, you could do that same idea with paint because what's on the bottom of a shoe? rubber and what do we make our stamps out of rubber right so basically you have this fun texture i don't know if you guys i wear converse shoes so i the, i love the texture of the bottom of a converse shoe nike puts uh their symbol now on the bottom of their shoe there's all sorts of fun textures and things on the bottoms of people's shoes a they have a lot of them and b um you know it's just rubber so it wipes right off um leaf prints you can go outside collect leaves so it's almost like a, a cross-curricular activity. The first they go out science-wise, go out looking for different leaves, um, and then come back in into the house and, uh, and get to do leaf prints um, with glaze. That's uh, a great way to encourage them getting outside and getting some exercise too this time right exactly. now. Exactly, and again, I, I cannot stress this enough. Each day you could do a whole different technique and what what better way to show yourself as a as a resource not even just for art projects but also just general enrichment because right now uh teachers and parents are figuring out how to teach kids at home and so you giving them resources like a cross-curricular activity you use the word cross-curricular 
end a webinar or a go live and people are going to be super excited about that. It just shows that you are really thinking about how they can implement it into their life, which is huge. Um, so again, like flower prints going out, finding different flowers, because a lot of them are starting to bloom. You can use those stamp with, uh, some, with a sponge with a uh, wet, wet glaze, stamp it right on there. Uh, and then Krista, you want to do yours? You've got some fingerprints and stuff. Yeah, using the Ed Emberley style books with doing fingerprints, you know, you do all the fingerprint art, but that'd be something you could share some pages from those, um, well, some, some of the techniques, not necessarily the pages for copyright, I guess, but um, doing some fingerprints and showing people in a video how you make it into a fish or how you make it into a flower. So things you may have done in the background for them before in your studio, show them how to do it in, in a, in a um, live or a webinar. Layering dots, you know, you could use a, the dot makers or you could use erasers or whatever tool, the end of a paintbrush to make a dot, let it dry and then do another dot on top. So you'd have your layered dots. Um, mandala designs, of course, those are very popular. That's something so easy that somebody could do, but they could have different um, thicknesses of markers or different types of tips of the, the back of a paintbrush, the back of a pencil, the back of a ballpoint pen to make different size dots. You could even share a pattern that they could go by to do on their um, pottery at home. Rolling marbles. I got this idea because when my son was in elementary school, they did a project where they had a cardboard box lid or something, and then they put a piece of paper in there, but you could do it with a, with a plate or something and have the marbles have paint on them, and then you roll it around. You kind of move that thing around, it makes a really cool design. So I thought it was kind of a fun thing to do. Because that's science. Exactly. Just um, bubble wrap, and somebody else mentioned bubble wrap just a minute ago. Charlene said that too. Bubble wrap makes great textures. It's kind of like uh, used a lot in journaling too. Laura Frederick will do a lot of that kind of cool stuff in her paper journals. But I think it's great also in um, in ceramics. And that hard paper, like the the brown paper that we pack stoneware in, yes, you yes. that up and do it as well. That would be a good a good texture. Absolutely. Uh, paper masking in general. Everyone has paper at home. Everyone's got scissors at home. Um, you know, so if you gave them simple like. Um, you know, you had a to-go kit that had just plates and you had little bunny rabbits that they could print out uh, onto their, you know, from their computer at home. Um, they would have that a little bunny printout that they could cut around and you could teach a masking class virtually online. Excellent. Virtually online, because that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, we're just going to skip right past that. So apple cutting. Uh, uh, <laughs> Apple prints. So you can do apple prints, which uh, basically most people think about doing them in acrylic. So you cut an apple in half and then you get all the cool uh, kind of little textures in there. You can also do it with oranges. Um, you can do it with lemons. You can do it with a whole lot of things. If you're going to do it with any sort of citrus fruit, you want to make sure that you kind of uh, um, get all of the liquid off of the surface before you try to apply the glaze. Because if not, you're going to water down the glaze and you're not really going to get a good stamp. But of course, practice it before you do a go live in front of a lot of people and it doesn't work. So um, uh, the next thing was lid prints. Um, I love a good lid, whether it's a soap dispenser or like the soap lid, um, the jar from pickles, a peanut butter jar. You have all different sets of circles in your house already. Um, and so circles on top of circles on top of circles. And you've now created this amazing layout, a background for whatever they're going to paint, or maybe they'll just do a bunch of um, circle backgrounds, which would also be cool. I'm very sad that I don't have a sample of that. I almost made one today, but I didn't. Sad day. And the last one is pasta. Um, those little swirly pasta and the little tubey pasta, um, those are all easy ways to be able to paint with. Just stick them in, use them like a, like a stamp. Um, a fettuccine, you know, different size lines so you can paint paint glaze right on it, set that onto your piece, and it's gonna show you, um, you know, that kind of that same texture as we did before. Krista, do you see that uh, question down there? You got yes. it? Um, Patty, about the um, paint tape, you could, you know, ideally you would use some of the paint that the, um, like this Kimports is selling because it comes in different sizes and different lengths, but if you can't get that, certainly they could use masking tape. Just have them make sure that that tape is all the way, you know, pressed all the way down and gets a good seal on the edges so the paint doesn't go underneath. If and for it, some reason it does, 
Yes, it has to go on this. That makes it a lot easier. And that way, and tell them too, you know, if the paint does go underneath the tape, because it'll happen, tell them what they can do and tell them it's okay. Sometimes it's a happy accident, but then other times you can just take a Q-tip and some water and just clean that right off. And a Q-tip is another fun thing to do designs with coming to think of it. If you do several of them together, you can make fun little flower dots, make it look like little, um, I don't even know what kind of flowers they are, but cute little flowers that have made up of lots of dots. <laughs> cute yeah. yellow flowers. Yes. Uh, the last question Patty had, is there, uh, is there any issues with the stickiness? Um, and the answer is, sure, there could be if you left tape on there for six months. But if you're just putting your tape down, putting the glaze on, and then taking the tape off, you shouldn't have an issue at all. Right. But good question. So that's the basics of what we uh, pulled together for you guys today to get your, your minds going. I know we can't all talk on here, but if you have any other ideas you want to share, feel free to go ahead and put those in the, the chat remarks right now. We can say them out loud or um, people can read those on there. I think in the, uh, I'll just chat while you guys start writing Excellent. all of your questions on here, but there are so many things all around your house that you can use, which means your customers can use. Um, uh, and so really it takes just a little bit of looking around. Like, so right now I'm sitting in my kitchen. We talked about that. So like right now I'm looking and my onions come in a bag. Hold please, I'm gonna go get them. This bag is gonna be really cool. I like this idea. It's an onion bag. But so look right here, I could do texture. I could do like a lace technique with the onion bag, right? So it's almost like a found object project. Mm -hmm. um, for the kids so they can go around and they're going to come up with ideas, Legos, uh, any toy that they have that can be washable, it can basically be used in ceramics for glaze because as long as we can clean it up, that's really all we care about. So the other thing that you can do is go online and Google acrylic painting uh, techniques because if you can do it with acrylic paint, almost always you can do it with Glaze. And so there are, you know, 50 different kindergarten projects, you know, pretend like you're a kindergarten teacher. All of those projects that kindergartner teachers do with their kids is easily transferred right into our new curriculum, because that's really what we should be calling it, guys, is this is your new curriculum for how you're going to educate your customers going forward. And you just became the art teacher, which is awesome, because that gives you a place and it gives uh, your customers something that they want and need. Because if, you know, Susie soccer mom is not, doesn't think she's creative, then she's going to go, well, I'm not teaching them anything. I'll, I'll do the basics, right? I'll do reading, I'll do math. And they're going to try to do a little bit of science, but if you're giving them the art and the, the reasoning and do a little bit of research to how, how you can make it applicable to them, that's gonna be huge. And also those kids are gonna get art that they wouldn't necessarily get. And that's just the art teacher in me talking, but I think it's really important in this time that there's so much opportunity for good art to happen. Krista, you should get me off of my soapbox. What are these people? I think, it, no, I think it's a good opportunity too, because like we were saying before, staying in front of your customers because they are gonna appreciate what you're doing now. And so later when, people are coming back into the studio regularly, they're gonna to go to your studio because they're gonna be like, that's the girl that kept me in touch. And this may even help you spark a new idea of something to do in your business in addition to your studio. You know, so this is all good ideas for you to use to go on for right now and for later. Um, so we had a few little questions um, or a few little comments. Mel said she's making mommy and me kits with a party pal and a wine glass. That's awesome. Nice. I and, like it. Uh, Patty, having them, oh, have your customers give ideas on Facebook. That's a great idea to increase interaction. Hang on, I have to go plug in my thing real quick. Hang on, sorry. That, mine just did the same thing. I had to go plug in my computer because it was dying. I got it, Krista. Okay. Put together mandolin kits uh, um, that sold online as pottery to purchase. That's great. Dots, mm -hmm. sets of tools, stamps, uh, uh, stencils, patterns. I had four sets available and they sold out right away. That's fantastic, especially because people are wanting something to like zone out and just relax on. So yeah. I think that made Graffito. Yeah. Graffito, yes. Good call. Good idea, DJ. Way to think out there. 
Does Mako have acrylic paints? Wink, wink, we do have acrylic paints, Tina. That's a great question. Um, you can actually get them at Biscuit Ports, crazy enough. Um, so our acrylic paints come in a two ounce jar. Two ounce? Mm, nope, four yes. ounce. I think it's four ounce. I'm almost positive. Um, comes in a four ounce jar, super pigmented, thick stroking coat, but acrylics. So, um, you know, you're not going to need 17 coats to be able to get good coverage with um, our uh, acrylics. And then you can really do any of the acrylic projects that you find online uh, would transfer directly over. Idea from Valerie Wheeler on Facebook for at home, create a scavenger hunt for items. Oh, fantastic. Or clay projects, both. Rocks, we didn't talk about rocks. Rocks are really great stamping tools because they're all different shapes, mm -hmm. sizes. I like those. So a uh, tip on here from Sandra, remove the tape while the paint is wet. This prevents chipping and is easier to clean up, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the idea of doing a scavenger hunt. That's really fun. Um, and then, yeah, Tina says art is part of a homeschool day. That's totally true. Okay. They have to have that. What it's a two ounce. Just here? kidding. Our acrylics come in two ounces, not four ounces. <laughs> and Amy said she's got to get her hands on those. So, you know, fun stuff coming from Amy Williams, it sounds like. Yeah, sounds like we need to, to make that happen. That's right. So, does anybody else have any questions or anything you want to share? It's been really fun. You guys have made it really fun for us. Thanks for shaving cream. Yeah, yeah, good one. Shaving cream is one of those techniques that is amazing on a go live because there's some setup so that you have some time to get people into the, to the go live before you actually do the fun stuff. Um, and then the actual technique is very much like an aha, like wow movement when you pull off like a silk screen, those sorts of things. So you kind of get the, the build up to be able to get your audience. And then you have like the wow moment, which I'm always a big fan of. So exactly. good call. Yeah. I don't know, Bree um, did a video the other day on our Mako page about um, working with clay and some clay projects. So if you do clay in your studio yep. already, it, um, it's a great video showing a simple project that you could incorporate and show for your customers. And you can even use that video to show to your customers. Absolutely. And so guys, the way that that uh, process worked is I just did a go live. Um, you know, your customers didn't necessarily have the clay yet, um, but it you are then building up a profile um, of projects and techniques that are just on your Facebook. Now, would it be great if they were on YouTube so people could uh, visit your YouTube page? Absolutely. But if you're not tech savvy, at least you have a place that's easily ac accessible, Facebook, and it's a catalog of your techniques and your projects. So yes, one day you're going to put them on your website and you're going to put them on your YouTube page. But right now it's very easy for you to do it just doing a go live and then it's there and then you don't even have to worry about it and i don't know about you guys but i do much better teaching in a go live than i do if i try to record myself because then i will end up doing the same thing 17 times and it still won't be right but if i do it live then it's just what it is sometimes and i think people appreciate that too you know um you're, you're just being real and you're talking and they get it and that just humanizes everything and it makes them feel better too it's just because I, I know it is like, I feel worried about getting on there live and doing something. But once you do it, you're like, oh, it's good. That's what people want to see. Yep, absolutely. So uh, one of the questions is, what's the difference between Mako's acrylics and something like the Royal acrylics uh, where the sealer's not added? Um, so two things. So Mako acrylics are have a matte base because they don't have a sealer included. Um, and so if you want a shiny uh, base, then you can add on either a spray sealer or a paint on sealer. Uh, but if you're looking for that matte finish, uh, then that's the, the finish that Mako, matte, or Mako acrylics already have in it. Um, and uh, like I said, they're super pigmented. So they're uh, a little bit more costly, but it's because your paint can go a lot further because there's so much pigment in there compared to something that is mostly a translucent medium with a little bit of color in it. Exactly, and it flows on really smoothly. It's really good stuff. Okay, recommendations for a sealer. So it's hard, uh, customer-wise, I would probably send them home with a paint-on sealer 
Um, uh, I believe that Mako sells a paint on sealer, at least we used to. We do no, we no longer sell an ac acrylic sealer in a spray can uh, because of the um, importing issues uh, with getting it. It's actually made in the U.S., but you can't transport it via um, a truck, like a uh, semi truck. Uh, because of its ability to explode if it like gets hit or something. I don't know. But anyhow, so we had to stop selling it. <laughs> it's not hazardous. That makes it sound bad. <laughs> it's not hazardous, I promise. Um, but uh, so I am more of a fan of a paint on sealer because it's much easier to get your hands on. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, and you can divvy it up for your customer as opposed to giving him a giant jar of spray sealer. No, well, you wouldn't want to give him the whole giant. Right, giant exactly. Person. That is. Yeah, for give him a little bottle of it. They do. There is a big, I'm going to research it and tell all of you in detail. <laughs> but we can't sell it anymore. Cool. It's a happy note to end right. on. Yeah. No, <laughs> no explosions. Yeah. <laughs> Just happy Mako painting. Thanks for joining us, everybody. 501. That's what it's called. Yay. Oh, BI okay. has the brush on Mako sealer. Yay. So you can just go add it to your order right now. Add to cart. Add to cart. Woohoo! Add to cart. That's right. Okay. okay. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you thank so much you. for joining us and uh, be safe. Best wishes. Yes, and wash your hands. That's right. Bye. Bye.